Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Committee meeting. Today we are the 30th July 2024. Uh, around the virtual table you have myself, Damien Duportal, Mark White, you might have Jay. Uh, all the others are in holidays. Uh, yeah, that's a good... I, I, I'm waiting for mine, but later. <laughs> Uh, announcement. So last week, the weekly release 2.469 did everything went well. Uh, no issue, no packaging error, no slowness on OSU OSM. So good. And today, the weekly 2.470 uh, started on time and is currently running. So we will watch it. Uh, third announcement as a reminder. The weekly infrastructure meeting next week, the 6th of August, is cancelled, which means we will see each other 13th of, of August. Next meeting, 13th August 2024. I don't have other announcements. Mark, do you? No other announcements for me. Nope. So uh, what about next weekly, since we will have two weeks? without meetings. So we will have 2.471 the 6th and 472 of course the 13th of August. All right and and now 13th I do need to to note one important thing on the 13th. Mm -hmm. The 13th is the targeted date when we hope to merge Jetty 12 EE8. Oh. And so for me that will be a, a weekly release that I'm monitoring very very carefully. So we just have... this will have Jetty twelve EE eight. So Jetty Jetty is the web container we use, right? Oh, and right okay. now we're based on Jetty ten. Okay. And so we're switching from Jetty ten, that is supports Java eleven and uses the old Jakarta, the old the old Java EE imports Java X dot servlet to Jetty twelve that still supports the Java X servlet imports but has the ability to allow us to, in a future release, a month or two from now, um, uh, to release uh, Jetty 12 EE9. So if you could in there put Jetty 10 to Jetty to 12 EE8, after the 12, that EE8 is quite important. Great. Okay. And I've been, I've been testing variants of this for a month and a half. So I'm not, I'm not actually worried about the uh, about the reliability of it, but it will be a major change. Okay. Let's see, we have Jay just joined. Hello, Jay. Hello. Hey, Mark. Hey, hey Jay. Dan. How are you guys doing today? Thanks, fine. So let's continue. So that means in two weeks, we will have to carefully test Infra -C on infra CI that will be a real life uh, experience. Right, exactly. That because infra is the one is infra and weekly are the two that we run run the weekly build on, right? Absolutely. Great, thank you. Okay, good. Uh, what about the next LTS version that will happen next week? So Mark White leads, as far as I understand, Jeremy play out shadows. Right, although Jeremy's out next week on holiday, oh. so that will just. But he's he did shadow me with the release candidate. It was created on time. The change log and the upgrade guide have merged. So oh. this one is looking from the release lead perspective, it looks fine. Uh, okay, let us let me know because I will be alone uh, next week. Let me know when you plan to start the, the build. If you want me to start any build in advance uh, before you wake up, Mark. Uh, don't hesitate to send me instruction the day before, and I will take care of doing it early if needed. Thanks, Damien. I'll I'll keep you in the loop. I don't. I I think given that we've had varying release build mm -hmm. times, thanks to Chris Stern and Alex Brandis and me as release leads, um, I think I should be able to con handle it. But let I'll keep you informed. Thanks very Good. much. So we don't have announced uh, security advisory on the public mailing list. <clears throat> And what about the upcoming credentials expirations? So we only have one in the in the upcoming three weeks. So I've created an issue that is right now in triage uh, to track. So 
there is a token, an artifactory admin API token used by Trusted CI every three hours when it runs the RPU. RPU is the repository permission updater. The goal of this token is to allow the job on Trusted CI to access a lot of information on Artifactory and to set permission everywhere on Artifactory, read, write, and stuff. This token is limited over time and expires at 13. So we'll have to renew it, apply it to Trusted CI, and then immediately check uh, that the build uploads it, uh, use it properly, and updates the credentials. So that will be done as soon as possible. I believe in the upcoming milestone. I don't have anything else. I propose we drop the next major event since we are only three. Mm -hmm. We'll take about we'll discuss about them later in two weeks. Although I'm proud to announce that Bruno's talk was accepted at CD oh. Mini Summit. Oh, that, that's important enough to mention. So CD Mini Summit is September 19, I think, and Bruno's talk was accepted. Nice. September 19 in Vienna. Right. Bruno Verarten talk accepted. Ah, I can't find the right emoji. That's frustrating me. <laughs> sparkle, sparkle will do. <laughs> okay, great. And Olivier Vernon will be there. Correct. And and he's actually leading that conference. So he's, he's also one of the speakers. Yeah, we're very grateful to Olivier. Okay. So now going to the cloud budget, uh, we're going to hit the 4.5 key uh, this month, I believe, on the final invoice. That's yeah, more than the previous months. Um, we haven't tracked uh, where does it come from because we did effort to decrease some resources on the CDF account. So um, need to carefully check why did it increase that may be other resources i haven't talked about um i saw that uh, most probably the outbound bandwidth on the nat gateway that we are using uh, that the thing we pay for and given the high load of activity we had that might have an impact still not sure but that's something that we want to just to check Maybe there is no nothing to to act uh, act on here. However, I would I just want to be sure why did we increase all of these elements? Which which resources? I still have two issues to create uh, for migrating private Kate's cluster and the third CI and trusted CI VMs, free virtual machines from CDF paid account to the sponsored account. Given we have credits. The goal will be to decrease that monthly bill until we reach the end of the credits. Any question on the CDF uh, Azure account budget? So I wasn't terribly worried by the, the increase. I, no, no dispute if you want to investigate, but a, a few hundred dollars is still easily within our budget for, for actual expenses each month. And we've done, done really well. So thanks. Yep. It's just, a, a, a quick check, there, there aren't any things we forgot, such as a premium storage or things like that. Got it. So, uh, not, well noted, it's not that much a problem. We won't spend too much time on it. About the sponsorship account, um, so I need to, I haven't updated the, sorry, the remaining, uh, the remaining uh, amounts, but we consume, we will have consumed 10K this month on this one. So, well, and, and the spring security project team thanks you for letting us consume at, at high rate. Mm -hmm. We're doing an awful lot of testing to be sure that everything stays healthy. That's good. So that means these credits are used. Microsoft is happy. We are happy. So yeah. that's good. Um, so that's a huge increase. I've... I haven't created the issue, but I've sent a request to the Azure team to enable spot instance quota. I haven't had any answer, which is weird, because usually the answer is yes or no, but in 24 hours. So we'll see. Maybe it's the summertime. Not sure. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, that will allow us to not reach the end of all these credits too soon. Um, oh, remaining credits, that's here. So we have six, uh, 68,000 credits. Uh, um, so until end of year, we are July. So that let us until January before we consume all the credits, given the current rate. Uh, so that will be way before the May 2025 now. Mm. That's why um, yeah, maybe uh, AWS will be useful. I propose we see until end of September. Is that okay for everyone? Because I'm thinking aloud, but if that if this finishes, if we consume all of these credits in January, we won't be able to fall back to the AWS donation because their credits expire in January as well. So given the consumption rate we are having, which is still good, we might want to plan some migration to AWS instead of a subscription. I'm mentioning these two here. That could be other resources or that could be the whole CI Jenkins IU instead. Just I propose we revise this plan end of August. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. Um, hmm. Digital Ocean, we haven't consumed much, so as expected, so nothing to say here. I haven't checked the CloudBiz account yet. Just let me load it. A quick check. Um, CloudBiz Jenkins in Friedman. Uh, so I believe we might see a, a slight increase. That's what we saw last week. We'll see uh, how the forecast is doing. So billing and cost management and drums, rolling drums. Right now we have consumed 6K. So we should be close to um, 6 .6 .5. That's uh, That's a bit higher than expected. And I see that the increase is outbound bandwidth as usual. Yeah. So nothing we can really work on except the update center. Any question? Nope, okay. Let's have a look at the milestone and the issues we were able to finish then. So we deleted account. Thanks Mark for taking care of them and uh, everyone involved. So we had spam users and we deleted or archived their accounts. Uh, we have had an issue with plugin uh, publication. SSH credential plugin released and now wasn't visible on the update center despite being released. So that was caused by the SSH restriction. Caused by SSH restrictions below. Uh, I made a mistake when cleaning up the manual security groups on AWS virtual machines. After testing with success the SSH, and the cleanup removed one of the SSH security group entries that wasn't absent on the automated system. So it has been fixed and is now tracked as code. That's the problem when we have manual things not tracked as code, is that we tend to forget some. So sorry for the inconvenience uh, that has been fixed the same day. Uh, so that was a restriction forbidding Trusted CI Update Center that was detecting the new plugin and generating the new Update Center index. It was preventing it to update it on the update Jenkins IO machine for SSH. That was the root problem, but that has been fixed. And now we have restriction SSH restriction on the virtual machines, all of our virtual machine, particularly the AWS mach um, usage. Uh, update Jenkins IO and census. Now you need to be allowed in the VPN and have the VPN connected. That will uh, get the routing of the specific URLs and your request will go through the VPN, which is allowed. So no need to update your public admins IP. Is there any question? That sounds great. So thanks, Mark, for uh, mentioning the latest G-Unit plugin version. 
So we were able to use it on a different location and that has been used today even for the um, uh, two days weekly, even on release CI. Uh, so I hope we saw improvement on CI Jenkins IO. I haven't seen errors, but I haven't looked on the improvement though. Yeah, so and my my biased perception is that it's better than before and biased because I was looking for better, right? And so, but as far as I can tell, ci.jenkins.io is responding very nicely. We've had no bug reports for the, the most recent release of the JUnit plugin, except one automated test detection that resulted in a new, in a new release in order to support the JUnit SQL storage plugin. So, and Tim Jacome did that, but that was detected by test automation, not by a report from a user. Nice, impressive. So we do need to be sure that we've got the most recent plugin again on ci.jenkins.io and friends, but it's less crucial because the bug fix does not affect us, right? We're not using SQL storage for JUnit results. Due to minor fix-ups. Right, Okay. exactly. Thanks, Mark. I uh, will create an issue because in any case, we will have to upgrade Datadog. It's been one month and a half that there is a new Datadog plugin update. Mm -hmm. I want an issue for this specific one because we need to put the controller down, take a snapshot, upgrade it, and see the result. And if it doesn't work, then uh, we rely because the free past upda upgrades broke CI Jenkins. <laughs> So if it break it, I want to, uh, yeah, we might lose one hour of builds, but in any case, we will roll back to the previous known state. Great. Next issue. Uh, thanks, Stefan and Tim uh, for this one. So we have, we used to have an account which was using Tim Jacom personal email on MaxMind. MaxMind provide databases for GeoIP which we use for mirror bits, our mirror redirection system. Uh, Tim mentioned that we received alert on his personal email about rate limits that maps to issue that Stefan and I uh, saw while adding mirrors. So we created a new account based on the Jenkins infra uh, with shared credential at the team level. So thanks, Stefan. And we are now using this on our production instances instead of team Jacom. So now the whole team can access and check the rate limit from, for this system. While we are on the rate limitation, Docker Hub, uh, okay, I know why we did add this. Um, we had a user on Elements, uh, Stefan Odul, who mentioned uh, that recently in the past weeks, Docker changed the 50K a rate limit of paid account to 5k. So that was a huge decrease and that explained why we suddenly started to, to see rate limits in scenario that didn't before. In order to avoid this problem, that's just a, that whereas just a few builds on CI Jenkins IO, uh, we have enabled authentication using a read-only account. So even if the token of this account is a um, let's say is pawned on CI Jenkins IO, that's not a huge deal. That will just impair our ability to rate limit. However, I want to create an issue about an ACP like Docker cache for CI Jenkins IO. Docker engine has this nice feature of a pull through registry. So you can use the official registry image, which is open source, and you can point by changing the Docker C daemon JSON file to tell the Docker engine, hey, every request you make should go through this proxy that will cache the images. So in fact, this one won't really solve the rate limit at large scale in the sense that every layer um, has a, um, still emits a request to the Docker Hub. However, that will make sure that we have a local ca set of caching for the layers of Docker images that is way faster and that avoid too much outbound bandwidth from the Docker Hub. So it won't solve the application rate limit. However, that will mean 
fast build for CI Jenkins IO. And trust me, our Docker images need this greatly. Mm -hmm. And Docker won't trigger the, uh, the abuse limits because the abuse limit is triggered mainly by bandwidth combined with requests. So if we just do tiny requests on metadata, that will be okay. Another benefit for us of such a system will be to store the credential of the account used to connect to the Docker Hub inside that system instead of inside CI Jenkins IO. So we won't need to have explicit pipeline instructions saying, hey, get that credential and Docker login, Docker log out with it. Uh, yeah. That's an improvement that's not mandatory, but that could be a nice improvement. So worth an issue. And I, I love that idea because that's also respectful of Docker's donation to us, right? That That's a, a way exactly. of respecting their contribution to the project and saying, look, we're not going to, we're going to find ways that we could reduce our use of your bandwidth further. I, I like that. That fits with the, the uh, recent post from Sonatype about, about Maven Central and the tragedy of the commons that they're being overwhelmed by, by requests to Maven Central that really should be cached. Now, as far as I know, we're caching. So one serve the, yeah, I, I like this one. Uh, I will give details on this one, but I wanted to mention uh, that part. Great, thanks. Thanks, Mark. I believe all issues have been served on this one. If anyone see other Docker rate limit issue, please reopen the issue and comment which job with a link and we will take care of it. Hmm. Next issue, um, so Daniel mentioned that the GitHub organization scanning on CI Jenkins IO for plugins was set up one year ago to uh, uh, something that say, hey, don't trigger build if you have indexing, only trigger build due to webhooks. And that one was annoying in his case because he created a new repository. And unless you are an administrator or maintainer, you cannot trigger the build from CI Jenkins IO. That was quite annoying. He had the admin, so he was able to fix himself, but that's not a good experience for end users. The reason why we had that setting is because we had waves of uh, builds and scanning, um, which was exhausting the API rate limit for GitHub. And now it's not the case anymore. So we have changed back to the original uh, setting that should content uh, Daniel and that did not trigger a big wave of uh, scan registry. So that does the job. Any question? No, thank you for doing the research. And thanks to Daniel for paying attention. My usual pattern on that is, oh, just launch the build. I have permission. And I forget that we have real users who don't have permission to launch jobs on, on ci.jenkins.io. So thanks to Daniel very much. We also had an issue related to gigits of uh, two weeks ago. So that was fixed already. And thanks, Stefan, for finishing and uh, making the configuration of our controller uh, way more resilient regarding Git and JGIT. So now all of our controllers are using the native command line for Git by default and have JGIT as a fallback for certain use cases. So that's why we were able to close the issue. Um, just a word about the GSOC project we we have. So we have the Manti who was uh, asking for better performances on stats Jenkins IO. So after pointing them to different direction and also enabling GZIP and Broly compression on our front ingress, we were able to drastically decrease the time. The, the, that's really impressive. We are under the, uh, the two second loads now. Uh, so numerous methods here, some are uh, compression and they cleaned up their uh, their bundle, but they also split and they are doing lazy loading. You load data only if you need it instead of loading everything at the beginning. So great job, honestly. Uh, and thanks everyone involved on this one. Any question? No, oh, I'm thrilled. And and their their new stats.jenkins.io site is a thing of thing of beauty. It just keeps getting better. So 
So it's yes. it's an elegant, elegant piece of work. Just amazing. And of course now, okay, look at that. Yes. All right. Now, now you've, okay, while we're here, you've got to do this because they've added something. Come on, we're going to take a side trip for, oh, whoops. Yeah. So, so yeah, go to new.stats, yeah, new yeah, new yeah. click, the, click the one which is um, the top one, statistics in detail. Okay, now over on the left, click Jenkins. Okay, so these are the installations. Now in the top left-hand corner, that compare, yes, that's the one. And if you compare the agents, I think is the choice there. So compare total jobs over time. So what we see is a flattening of Jenkins installations of controller installations, right? There's this flattening, but you notice that the total number of jobs is still near linear increase. So, so what we're seeing is, okay, we're not getting as many controller installations increase as we used to, but people are continuing to use very heavily and increase their usage of Jenkins. And, and this graph I'd never seen before. It, it was not available in the old, the old user interface. So thanks very much to the stats team. That GSOC right. project is wonderful. Impressive. Congratulations. And finally, we are, I'm proud to announce that we have now two new mirrors for downloads. One is located in Taiwan and the other in Japan. So our friends in Asia continents have now way more mirrors. So I hope it will be useful for a lot of people. Thanks for the person involved on this one, on these two. Thanks for sponsoring the Jenkins project. By the way, adding these mirrors was the reason why we reached the rate limit on Max Mind you, IP, API. Yeah. Um, we also had an issue closed as not planned. Uh, that was uh, an out of topic issue about uh, a plugin build failing, but that wasn't our, our, as far as I remember, that wasn't an infrastructure problem. Just, merely, just let me check. Yeah, it was being downloaded from, no, yeah. it's needed from central, is that right? Or something like that? So yeah, so in fact, um, the, the problem wasn't uh, an artifact issue as per se, it was a network issue. Because after building the application and doing everything fine, uh, there were some kind of integration tests using Docker in Docker. All right. And the setup of that Docker in Docker was old and wrongly set since years. So we reach a version of the outer Docker engine in our images, which is up to date and secured. And in fact, they were a exploiting a weakness in the Docker engine in the case of Docker in Docker. That's not a security problem for us, but now that, that weakness has been removed by Docker, uh, the, that created an expected error on this setup. As pointed out by Jesse, uh, test container should be the way to go right now because test container is a framework that allow uh, you Java developers to have directly connection with your Java unit code or integration code or whatever that will take care of uh, dealing and communicating with Docker CE and creating, removing container for your tests, which is way easier than doing it by hand or worse in Docker in Docker. Thank you. Okay, now let's check the work in progress and see if we still have to work on these elements. First and most important one, update center. So we want to migrate update Jenkins IO out of the current AWS VM to a mirror system. So what's new? Uh, mirror system is ready. System is ready and balance geographically request and balance requestory. That's the French part of my mind, because geographically as expected. So Mark and I paired a few days ago, and we confirmed that his requests from central US were redirected to the, to the American mirror, while my requests in Europe were redirected to the mirror, uh, to the European mirror. 
That also is a good thing for the future. We might be able to have Asia and or China specific uh, mirrors. Uh, but yeah, so right now it's working as expected on that level. Then uh, we started functional test. Test started. So Jenkins plugin CLI works perfectly. Works perfectly. Um, we had uh, hiccups from Jenkins plugin UCUI, but fixed. So that one was, uh, uh, we saw a weird an unexpected behavior of Apache when generating the, um, uh, the redirections when you request a dynamic update center that was downgrading, downgrading HTTPS to HTTP during the redirection chain. That was due to a topology change with Apache. Apache used to be the front end web server terminating TLS and knowing the final and uh, host name. That's not the case anymore. Uh, we scratched a bit our, our head in order to find this. I thought it was on Jenkins side and that would have been really annoying for that project, but it's not. Java HTTP client works as expected. And that's a good thing. So the fix was really funny. Uh, we only had to set the server name of this Apache from the localhost default value to HTTPS column slash slash localhost and it worked. Because in fact, Apache is able to retrieve the host name of the client request by looking at the X forwarded host inside the header provided by the proxy. However, it doesn't honor the X forwarded proto that contains the protocol used HTTP or HTTPS. So we had to trick Apache by forcing him on HTTPS. Even, even, even if there is no he, TLS. He's not doing SSL. He's not doing TLS on, oh, okay. I had missed that in our session. Good. All right. So the crucial thing was localhost, but lie about the protocol because we know it's talking HTTP. It's not actually talking HTTPS. Exactly. Ah. And, and that trick was pointed me to me by one of the Nginx initial author, uh, Maxim and <laughs> Maxim told me it's the reason that made him start working and contributing on Nginx because that problem has been so infuriating for him 15 years ago that he started to go in Nginx development. <laughs> that one was a funny one. Anyway, uh, so now um, the last one, uh, no, so now it works with Jenkins UI. The last one I'm, I want to check before going further is me using Jenkins and instead of blocking requests to update Jenkins IO, I want to override the update Jenkins IO hostname so that it redirects to the IP of the new mirror. Because in the case of Jenkins UI, when it gets and retrieves the JSON file, the URL of the plugins is inside and it's assigned content. So you cannot change update Jenkins IO to the new testing URL, Azure update Jenkins IO. Mm. So in the end, my Jenkins still fails to download plugin because it uses the URL from the metadata, which is expected and that's a good thing. So now the next trick, I wanted to block request to update Jenkins IO. So I, wa I was able to see errors. Now I will just force request to update Jenkins IO to go on Azure update Jenkins IO. And for that, I need. Uh, I realized that I need to set up the production service. I thought it was, but it's not. Uh, that's just a quick uh, host name update on the ingress. That should that will be quick. And once this, uh, so last one, um, send everything to Azure Update instead of update in testing scenario. But outside this, I'm pretty confident that it will behave as expected, which means stress test to start. So the stress test will consist in two parts. First, we will uh, retrieve a day of access log from the current machine, and we will run the same access log in one hour instead of one day, and we'll see if it's able to, to get the load, and also, we want to have the same exact HTTP answer code for each request. 
So from a full day access log of pod, but in one hour, and then random stress test. So we have the tool and the note from Hervé, so that should be quite easy because Vegeta, the, the load injector system, can support both access log uh, emission, request emission, and random request. Um, that's all for the update Jenkins IO, but that means next time we see each other, we should be able to plan a brownout for the second part of August. Congratulations, Damien. That is exceptional. Let's start using this service for our controllers. Any question on this one? I like that. So, so it would be okay if I switched my controller now to use azure.jenkins, let's see, azure.updates.jenkins.io instead of updates.jenkins.io. Exactly. You have Good. to know that for now, only metadata or tools installer will be retrieved from the new one. It will still download plugin through the request to update Jenkins.io that redirect to get Jenkins.io. Which, which is is fine already it's a good starting point for me that's that's a very good starting point that i can i can test drive so i like that um a few things uh let's say operational tasks though collect uh, ensure we collect metrics and logs for this application in Datadog. Because that might need a few Kubernetes settings, not that much, but just a few, the proper annotation in order to have the logs. So that's way easier because we will switch from one instance to two instances. So if we want to check the logs of something that happened, that's easier to have aggregated logs. Any question? No, I actually, I re just re realized I have a, a, a non-agenda topic that could we add to the bottom of our list yep. to somewhere uh, Mark Wait has a topic uh, request. Mark Wait has a request from uh, a, a longtime friend about something. So uh, I, Mark Wait has a data dog request. Let's put it that way. Oh, yeah. I think he opened an issue. Oh, good. Okay. It's the same person we are speaking about. Okay. Oh, so we may already get there. Very good. All right. Thank you. He, he, he sent me personal messages yesterday and I told him, please, I'll take issue, Andrew. Okay. Well, Thanks, oh, no, no, no. This is different. This is James oh. Brown. This oh. is a James Brown question, not an Andrew Bader okay. question. So... Olivier Vernon already uh, spoiled. Me. spoiled. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. Good. Okay. Good thing. Um, next topic, uh, a status on the JDK upgrades for Timurin. So we have upgraded everything we could, except first uh, the LTS, because we are waiting for the LTS release to get the latest version. And the S319X, the installation on the machine, not the tools. The tools are OK and used already if you have a build running on this machine. And I want to spend some time with Jay in upgrading the existing GDK on that machine. So that's why we have delayed. This issue won't be a lot of effort this week and should be closed after the LTS upgrades in 10 days. Great. Waiting for LTS and the 390X GDK upgrades. And I hope that I have not disrupted anything on S390X because I intentionally adjusted my scripts to special case that one to not perform a system-wide upgrade. So I like the okay. I like the, the change on my scripts because it means I know that I am responsible for all the files in my own my own directories and that's it. Cool. And if it's upgraded the things, that's not a problem. Right. Well, and if it is, let me know and I'll I'll apologize happily then. I tried to not upgrade it. Good. Next top level topic. Um so GDK21 agent. Jay. Can you, are you okay? Or do you want me to lead uh, the summary here of that test? Uh, you can lead the summary. Okay. 
So CI Jenkins.io is now providing Maven 17 and Maven 21 for VMs with Docker. The use case is the following. If you are using test container, and if you want to tr start building your plugin or Jenkins project on CI Jenkins IO with GDK 21, you can require Maven 21 and, and VM. Documentation has been updated. By the way, we also did the same for IRM 64 VMs, but it does not work. <laughs> and we need to fix this one. Uh, acceptance test has been updated, Mark, and is failing because the IRM64 machine not being spinned up. And I believe JA found the issue while testing on his machine. Oh. It's that the setup for the ephemeral disk doesn't work on the IRM instances we use. Next step, SSH agents, Maven 17 and Maven 21. Linux as well, providing Linux for trusted CI and third CI. But trusted is the priority, but both are using SSH agents. So right now, Jay is working on that part in autonomy. He has an access to a resource group on Azure, so he can create machine. We successfully, uh, he successfully showed me yesterday a setup where his SSH agent were created. So the next step is now putting that as code and experimenting on how to specify your default GDK for each of these agents, which of course is different than the agent Java bin. And then Windows. Did I cover everything, Jay, or did I forget something? I think you covered everything. Cool, so thanks for your work. Do you have uh, blockers on this one? Things you will need to be addressed, need the help, or is it uh, not a yet, matter of time? But okay. Yeah, it's a matter of time. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Uh, now, for the rest of the issues. Mm, oh, no, we have the GitHub API rate limit. On Infra CI, each time we trigger a Gcask reload, job DSL reload its configuration, and that triggers a wave of multi-branch build indexing, which we don't want because it exhausts the GH API rate limits due to the big amount of tags on branches and repositories. That is really an annoying one. So first of all, if we disable the API uh, throttle rate limit, that just make the instance blocked but at least we have a hard message that say, hey, GitHub is refusing connection from you for the next hour. Well, with the rate limiting, we have a nicer message that say, hey, we are throttling. So <laughs> we might want to re-enable the throttling. That's uh, nicer to diagnose. Um, so I've tried before this meeting a new setup, which is uh, using the, the build strategy that skip the builds due to indexing. But I believe that's not exactly what we want. Uh, I was able to test on a local system, but we need a fully successful scan for each build. So we'll see the result later. Um, right now, I only exhausted twice the API, the GH API rate limits. I haven't found anything on that topic, Mark, and I believe that's uh, a problem. Either I'm missing something, but it looks like there is no solution, and that's weird. I'm sure other users have already had this issue, right? Yeah, so it's that we're, we're encountering the GitHub API rate limit in a very specific case. Tell me again. The... Now, when we do a GCASC reload on the controller, so each okay. time we update the controller config, oh. Then job DSL invokes. I see. All right. So, so the the set of users that are affected are those that are using job DSL and using configuration as code. Okay, yep. that, that explains why I'm not affected. I don't use job DSL. I only use configuration as code. So, got it. Okay. Okay. Yep. The problem is we need job DSL to to right, keep to and define our code jobs. definition. Yeah. Right. And I'm not sure why. I mean. 
we don't I don't see any visible uh, traits on the GitHub branch sources for multi-branch saying, hey, please. The, the same thing as what Daniel, the problem that Daniel had on the organization folder, I don't see it on multi-branch level. Yeah. It's not and, visible on the UI. And and it may in fact be that the assumption is, hey, we'll only will only do that at the organization folder level and tell people use use tuned definitions of organization folders that's what no, i've done no that's a nightmare because you cannot so well, okay so then i have a big a major rfe for organization you... folder i want to make exception for some of the computed items mm. because in the case of docker jobs we only have one folder for all docker jobs i mm. would need three different organization scanning one for the simple job that we build uh, only on dependency change, one for the regular updates, and one from the non-Jenkins infra. So that yeah. we could I, technically, but that will be just, yeah, more. You're now hearing my guesses. So it's good to have the discussion. I cool. Probably best raise it, raise it as a question either on the Jenkins community forum or on, Absolutely. on the developer mailing list to say, hey, Here's what, or I guess the user mailing list is a better choice here. And and here's what we're seeing is, should it be done a different way? And we might miss something obvious. On the short term, if the, the trick I'm trying doesn't uh, work, uh, I will work, because I'm alone these two weeks, I will work on specifying different GH application, one for each domain. So when one of these elements um, has a rate limit, most probably Docker, because we check for, for tags, mm -hmm. then in that case, the other won't be stuck due to this one. Okay. Um, whip on job config to be verified. Otherwise, we'll split credentials. Okay. Um, all the other issue are currently stuck and did not receive any activity. Uh, I see that we had the discussion about removing the 999 yeah, that snapshot. One, that one's in progress while, while Tim is working through a proposal to change Jenkins core to use Renovate fully. And, and there are some problems that they're trying to solve before they can make that transition. So this one, it, it's correct in the state it's in right now. Okay. So right now on old, see. Right. So exactly. we'll remove it from the milestone because it's been three milestones. Right. Yeah. And it's outside that... our scope. Yeah, it, it is not something it is not something thing we well, we could certainly still remove we could do the removal from Artifactory. That's something we could do with with Daniel Beck as soon as he's available. But the bigger problem is that we we we've got proposed updates from Dependabot that are wrong. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we'll see. Maybe we will need to work on the part. I can delete uh, snapshots as well as Daniel, but I will prefer doing it at in pair or triple. Right. Safer. Um, no news from OSS Planet. They asked about the OSU OSL slowness two weeks ago. No news since one week, but yeah, it's summertime. So I, I, at least on the North Hemisphere. So I assume they are grilling under the sun somewhere or they are overwhelmed by the amount of tasks and requests. Mm. Let's wait until end of month. So I will put it on hold. And I will add it uh, as soon as we have news. Is that OK? OK. Yes. Um, now we have uh, uh, no news from Adrian about the fix for plugin ill score. Uh, no, he told he's... me he might have fun, but he's absolutely on other priorities right now. Yeah, so spring, on spring security is is full full experience for him. We're just accepting this is this is. Yeah, spring security has to be his, his full focus. So that'll be a while. No problem on this one. Um, so not on hold, I will resume work on this one uh, because I was overwhelmed by other tasks, but we have to continue IRAM64 migration. Hervé did some preliminary work on mirror bits. 
And for LDAP, uh, Stefan provided documentation and issues on one of the behavior I saw. So now the next step is to reproduce locally. Uh, next steps are LDAP, need to um, uh, run it locally. And mirror bits, custom binary build. Uh, because mirror bits next build will be one dot something. If it happens one day, I'm still worried about this one. So right now we are going to build the source code ourselves. The issue that Hervé had on his last try is that he was able to get the same uh, tagged version as what we have in production, mm -hmm. but we are missing some vendor dependencies because yeah, Maven is really good at managing dependencies, especially with Sonatype and Artifactory systems. Golang, especially in the past, had some dark ages, and that was during these dark ages. So we need to find a way to retrieve the proper uh, dependencies. Most of back in that time, it we used to have vendoring of these dependencies, but that hasn't been done on that project. And the thing is, if um, we we use the fixes, we will have to increase the version of mirror bits that will deliver to our production some fixes or changes. That's not a problem per se, but we need to review these changes carefully. Eventually test them on update on the new update Jenkins IO before rolling it out to get Jenkins IO. And finally, um, uh, did not work on this, resuming this week. So that's a long running topic and uh, looks like uh, uh, we will create a new issue for some of the elements because uh, our friend Hervé saw a lot of improvements, but all of these improvements generate a huge list, which is over scope. Right now, the scope to focus for this issue is existing Terraform and Docker job, and we split them up their update CLI and normal processes on two different jobs on infra CI. Eventually, two different GitHub app authentication rate limit. <laughs> for this one. I don't want to work on the A moving uh, update CLI process running on GitHub Action to infra CI because that one is way wider. How about the external contributor, about the additional workload, about the visibility publicly or not. So in order to avoid this, I think we will split and another issue will be created for the GHA to Jenkins migration. There is no compelling reason for doing it. That's all for the work in progress. So these two past one will stay on the current milestone. Any question on this? Okay, so now let's just do a bit of triage. We have two new issues. So the trusted RPU factory and a friend at Datadog, but that's not the same as uh, Mark. <laughs> So let's start with uh, with Andrew request. So Andrew um, is still processing the stats about usage Jenkins IO, aggregating them on his personal machine. Thanks Andrew for making this leap. That's a topic that I even forgot about. Um, Andrew need VPN access in order to reach usage Jenkins IO with SSH because we restricted the machine. So that's a good thing that shows that our restrictions are working as expected. And of course, since Andrew haven't, had, haven't used the VPN since two years and a half, now he is having trouble. So I told him, hey, let's create a new account. You will have the latest routing rules and that will be okay. So I will work on this later today so we'll be able to process the stats. Any question on this one? Oh, thanks. Thanks for doing it. And, and, and seriously, thanks. Deepest thanks to Andrew for his continuing to process. That's, that's the data that is used by stats.jenkins.io. So it's, it's especially vital that we have that, that data that he's doing. And the second one is the RPU update we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't have other new topic for now.
So, okay, so Mark, it's your time. So, for the so my new topic is I got a re I received a request from James Brown. Uh, James James is a uh, he's working with a company now that does uses data dog traces and applies um, machine learning to those to to the or data dog output and applies machine learning to those data dog outputs. And they're offering to open source projects that are using Datadog a free use of their service um, with the potential that the service can help identify problems or point to issues. Now, the, he offered five different areas that they are that their organization is focused on, but at least two of them are not of interest to us because we're not using that feature. So one is pipeline observability, right? And we're not doing pipeline observability right now with, uh, and I'll, I'll put the list into the notes, just there are multiple areas. Uh, we do, but, but on Datadog, um, we, can, we haven't found a way to publish this unless you have a Datadog account for Jenkins Infra. But we have the collection and we can see this diagram. Oh, we do have observability. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, my mistake. That's great. Okay. So I, mis I misled him by saying that we weren't doing observability. Okay. So we do have pipeline observability. So then, then what? And the other four areas, one was outages, incidents, that kind of thing. There, there are other topics like that. So in good. trying to identify incidents, et cetera. And so then the, the, what they said is what, what's needed is the consumer, the contributor, the, the, pro, the Jenkins project would have to use and create an API key for our data dog and share that API key with them, with their service, their service in the cloud. And they would then start reading our data and offering us insights privately. Now the challenge was I wasn't granting an API key to our data dog. Um, seems like it needs involvement from all the right people who say, what are the risks security wise of doing that? And, and the, um, what's the depth of it, et cetera. The, the problem here is uh, we need to check. Uh, I know there are scopes for the API keys uh, two weeks ago when I migrated the Terraform state of the Terraform Datadog project, we have a staging and I was able to scope the token of the staging to read only because that's a project that always go from scratch and that just mm. check the Terraform plan. Okay. So I know we have scopes. We could scope that API key to only things, but we need to check what is the feasibility because the risk here is that there are data that there is no problem to share with them, such as CI, Jenkins, IO traces, for instance, or metrics. Right. But the private cluster metrics or logs or even traces, we don't want them to access this. Right. And and, and I assume that that kind of thing was we're, we're exposing public data is, is safe. But us partitioning at the data dog level into public and private is probably more work than we're ready to do and not enough benefit from, not enough even hope mm. for benefit from this kind of analysis. Um, that, that's, I'm not absolutely sure because the, uh, that if data dog will be okay to do something like Docker, meaning sponsoring us on two different and distinct accounts, one public and one private, for instance. Ah. That means we could remove some, let's say, um, scary part of not using Datadog everywhere because right. we have private controller. Uh, I mean, trusted CI or release CI could benefit from pipeline observability, for instance. But that could be a way. Um, on the other way, uh, there has been rumors that are public since three weeks about Datadog buying eventually GitLab. And in such case of event, I don't know what our sponsorship will become. I don't. I think we will have one year because Datadog don't want to break everything. But at the moment in time, the question will raise. And in any case, we also, have, we also need a back out from Datadog. Uh, so we have solution. We used to have Prometheus that also provide with Grafana an, ab an ability to collect log metrics. 
Right. We have to pay for the storage, but we have our own possibility here. So maybe that could be Datadog should move to public only and the private data should move to Prometheus collection that we manage. You see, we have different solutions here. So that's worth um, asking them. And I believe a call with James or someone from the company could be interesting because I believe their marketing or uh, let's say support or field team might have solution if they require this from customers. I'm sure we are not alone to have this problem. So they might have already a manual or a clues mm -hmm. on how oh, do we want to segregate data here. Good. Okay. Well, so I'll 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 connect with James and offer that we're interested in doing a in having a, a an introductory call. Good. Good idea. All right. Thank you. I think that's all for today. Do you have other topic, folks? I just need to go check that the weekly release is still in progress. It should be now about 90 minutes closer to done. So only about 90 minutes left to do. Cool. So I'm going to stop recording. Uh, so first, stop sharing, stop recording. So for people watching us, see you in two weeks.